if a band files a copyright, what does that really protect? Does it protect the lyrics and the music? Or are there different forms you can file to protect the recorded song versus the lyrics? Or do you need to file both? So that's a good question too. Um, you know, you can, I, I'll be honest, I actually don't file them as often, but I have filed them in, in the past. So my memory tends to lapse a little bit when it comes to exactly what to, what to file, unless I'm looking at the application. Right. Directly. But, but you can, you know, there's a copyright in the sound recording and then there's a copyright in the uh, lyrics. And so um, those are two different copyrights and there's a, there's a there's an exponential amount of uh, uh, of people that can own the copyright when you start talking about registering a copyright for sound recordings, registering the copyright in the lyrics based on the number of people that have contributed to that work. Okay. So let's say you know three people contribute to the lyrics, then each of those three people is going to own a copyright in the lyrics. Now, if okay. five people or six people contribute to the sound recording then those six people also have a copyright in the sound recording. Um, and so it, 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 can, it can become complicated sometimes, um, but I'm talking about in the future when you want to assign the copyright to um, a publisher or to a record company, that's when it becomes complicated. But when you're just talking about registering it, you just have to make sure that you're uh, including the right owners Okay. Uh, in that copyright registration and you that part is is pretty straightforward. Okay. Now if somebody changes a lyric or something in the song is it necessary to file a whole new copyright application? That is a really good question. Um, I've done it. I've um, actually changed words in some of my songs and filed another because I didn't know what to do. Yeah, that is a really good question actually and um, It's tricky. It's your my 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 gut tells me that uh, if you've changed the work substantially, right. then it becomes a whole nother copyrighted work. Okay. If you're only changing a lyric, I'm not sure that it would be changed substantially enough to where you would now own your own entire uh, song or you would be the owner of an entire new set of lyrics because then I would say, well, one lyric is not, like I said, substantially changing the entire uh, composition of the work. Understood. Yeah, and so that is where you get into, um, you know, blurry really, lines. Right, yeah. right, I guess it really comes down to if there were an infringement and it did go to court, it would be up to a judge or a jury to decide that. Well, either, it could be either. Yeah. Um, which is really unlikely unless you hit it big with something and somebody would just blatantly rips you off big time, which is pretty yeah, rare, I have to imagine. Uh, yeah, I mean, it doesn't, I'll, I'll be honest with you, sometimes it doesn't matter how big you are, although that certainly is one of the factors. What matters more is how deep are your pockets. Uh, and so sometimes small people can have deep pockets or very yeah. popular people obviously have big pockets. Right. Um, and so I think that that's really what it comes down to. Or even if the defendant has big pockets, then it might be a worthwhile case for the plaintiff. Right. Um, so, so I think that those are, those are the factors to analyze. Do you think that the, you remember ever hearing about the poor man's copyright where you fold up your lyrics, put it in an envelope and mail it to yourself? Yeah. It's kind of stupid. I've been asked about that before. And yeah, you know, it's, it's one but of those things it, like, right? It's not in like the lawyer's handbook. It's not, you know, copy, copyright lawyers don't learn that in law school. And so right. I'm pretty sure that that wouldn't be like a default method that I would recommend to a client. No. Gotcha. I gotcha. So if a band files a trademark and it's approved and some other band starts running around using the same name, what does the band who owns the trademark do? The band who owns the trademark. Now, if it's registered, they can sue them in federal court. Um, I mean, do you do that right away or do you say, hey, cease and desist, stop using my name or I'm going to get you? Like, what, do they really have to worry about it? Because a lot of bands just, hey, I like this name. I'm going to call myself Oranges and Apples and I'm not worried if there's some other guy. I don't have to worry about it. Yeah. If somebody, so, yeah, go ahead. I was about to say, actually, that, yeah, but there are a number of steps that you can take before you just decide to file a, a lawsuit. And yes, what you mentioned is one of those steps. So 
you know, on the most basic level, you can say to them, you can reach out personally as a band member. Let's say you want to save on attorney's fees, reach out to them and say, um, you know what, I've been using this name since, you know, such and such date. Um, you need to stop using this name or, you know, I can pursue legal action, but I'm not, you know, I don't want to get there. So let's just resolve this amicably. Cool. Um, then it could go either way. They could say, oh, you know what? I had no idea. And many times that is the case. They simply just don't know. And so they'll say, okay, I'll stop. Uh, other times they'll say, okay, but I don't care. And so then that's when you can decide to see a lawyer and then a lawyer would probably send them a cease and desist letter or reach out to their attorney and kind of try to do the same thing amicably. If that doesn't work, then a cease and desist. If that doesn't work, then you can file a lawsuit. Gotcha. But you could just file a lawsuit right away. Yeah, you could. If, oh you, boy. If, yeah. Wow, that's ugly. If you feel aggressive that day, you can <laughs> file a lawsuit. But just make sure that you're going to feel aggressive the next day and the next day and the next day because right. it's not the kind of thing you want to play around with. Right, right. It starts to get kind of expensive. So is it expensive to file a trademark? A lot of bands have asked me this. So. Not, I mean, that's all relative, right? To some people, it's like, wow, that's so expensive. And to other people, it's like, oh, that's a small price to pay for protecting my brand. Right. Um, but, you know, the base, the application fee at the USPTO can be 225 or it can be 275 depending on what kind of application you file. Um, and then, of course, attorney fees can range anywhere between like 600 all the way to 1200 It just depends. Okay. Depends what kind of walls are on it to you, how many classes, whether you want to file the logo and the name. That's right. So you're going to be looking at 225 or 275 per uh, identification of goods and services. Okay. So that means that let's say you just sell hoodies, clothes, then that's one class. But now if you're going to sell hoodies and um, CDs, you have, um, or downloadable music, um, and then you're also going to sell, I don't know what's an example, I, uh, just car parts or something, because yeah. that's your hobby under that same brand. Um, then, then you're looking at three different classes, so it would be 275 times three. Oh. Yeah. And okay. then your attorney fees if you are filing through an attorney. So yeah, there are costs to look at. A lot of people just use one class, the one that they mostly are using and want right. the most protection in first. Um, and that's, I mean, that, that's really how you have to look at it if you're looking at budgeting for this thing. But, right. you know, if you want to be comprehensive, you should select all of the identification of goods and services that are applicable to you. Understood. And what if I'm a band and I like Mercedes Benz and I want to call my band Mercedes Benz? It has nothing to do with cars, but can I get away with trademarking Mercedes Benz as the name of my band? That's a great question. I'm really glad you asked. And so when you're filing an application and you select your identification of goods and services, um, you are protected in that class only. So if I have a, an application for or a registered trademark for Mercedes Benz in automobiles, then mm, chances are that somebody who wants to register Mercedes Benz in chocolate or in soap or in something else might be able to use Mercedes-Benz in those other classes. And it's the reason why the brand name Dove exists in chocolate and also soap. Uh. Okay, so, but, but I have seen that with big, big brands like that, what they will do is even if you're in something completely unrelated to automobiles, Mercedes-Benz still might send you uh, a notice saying, hey, we're going to cancel your mark if you don't cancel your application. Um, or we're going to file an opposition to your trademark application if you don't stop or if you don't abandon it. So sometimes they can get territorial and, you know, brands sometimes, not all of them, but they do tend to take on bully-like characteristics um, just because they don't, they just want, they don't want anybody on their playing field at right. all, at all. I can Whether understand. it's in that category or not. They probably don't want somebody to tarnish the brand using the same name. Right. Yeah. right. I actually got zapped. I filed a, a trademark several years ago for a computer company. I used a red cross. Mm -hmm. like, the American red cross came after me having cease and desist, filed an opposition. I just, okay, I'm done. <laughs> and what was, the, what, was the, what was the category that you registered in? 
a computer repair. Oh, computer repair. Yeah, and nothing to do with medical services or charitable yeah. mm -hmm. or or yeah, it was just they just wanted to protect that Red Cross. They said you can't use that Red Cross for anything else. Yeah, see, so that yeah, that's a perfect example of what I was just talking about. I mean, yeah. brands that just it wanna... was bullyish. It was. It seemed bullyish. It was the perfect. Yeah, the perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and so sometimes, sometimes that can be worked around if you, you know, one little tip or trick is if you know how to use the T-tab, um, then you can look at the history of how they've dealt with other oppositions. Oh. And that'll kind of give you an inkling as to, okay, this is how they're most likely going to treat me, but we still have to play the game and go about, you know, going back and forth. And, and so that part still costs money. But at least it'll give you an idea of whether it's worth it to spend that money through an attorney or, you know, spend the time if you're doing it yourself. Um, you know, you can gauge whether it's worth your time or money by looking at how other uh, oppositions have played out.